Today is Wednesday, the 11th of September. Welcome to our morning devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we'll read a devotion intended for the Feast of St. John the Baptist, Luke 1, 57-66. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him Zechariah after his father, but his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted him to be called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed and he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. The circumstances surrounding the birth of John were extraordinary. First, his birth has been proclaimed, it had been proclaimed 800 years before the fact. The prophets had said of him, a voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God, Isaiah 40, verse 3. And behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Malachi 3, verse 1. When the time drew near in which John, the forerunner of Christ, was to be born, the angel Gabriel proclaimed it to his father, Zechariah. Here God revealed a wonder of wonders. Elizabeth, an old woman, was to become John's mother. When Zechariah, a priest, went to burn incense, as was his duty, Gabriel appeared to him and announced that he would have a son in his old age. The disbelieving Zechariah replied, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent, and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words. And it happened just as the angel had foretold. Zechariah came out of the temple, before which a crowd of people had gathered, but he could not address them, because God had bound his tongue. When finally John was born, neighbors and friends rejoiced with the happy mother, on the day of his circumcision, ignorant of God's command, the people wanted to name the child after his father. But Elizabeth, to whom the decree of God had been revealed, said, No, he shall be called John. The guests were surprised and said, None of your relatives is called by this name. Then they turned to the father and asked him what he wanted to name his son. Unable to speak, Zechariah took a tablet and wrote, His name is John. And at that very moment, his tongue was loosed, and he began to praise God. Astonished, the neighbors added their own chorus of praise to the one whose invisible hand they could not fail to recognize here. Soon the wonderful story of the birth of John resounded throughout the Jewish community. But this did not happen for the glorification of John, but for the glorification of Christ, whom John would proclaim and reveal. 
honor was accorded the servant only so we could recognize the infinitely greater glory of the Lord. Attention was paid to the forerunner only so we would be that much more attentive to the inexpressibly greater grandeur of the coming one. Because Isaiah had already preached about John's coming, we can be sure that the sending of Jesus Christ has been decided from eternity. Gabriel had to announce John's birth, and from this we should recognize that all of the heavenly hosts must serve Christ. John was filled with the Holy Ghost and his joy even while he was still in his mother's womb. This is a reflection of the infinitely greater measure with which Christ was anointed with the Spirit at his conception. An old woman was miraculously enabled to be John's mother, and Christ was born of the Virgin by the overshadowing of the Holy Ghost. According to God's command, the forerunner of Christ was named John, that is, a pardoned one. And Jesus is the Savior, the bringer of grace, as his name indicates. As soon as he returned to faith in God's promises, Zechariah was freed from his sins and filled with the Holy Ghost. This tells us that faith in Christ blots out all guilt and punishment and adorns our hearts with the gifts of the Spirit. At the birth of John, the whole region was rocked with joy, and at the birth of Christ, the whole world should be filled with joy, wonder, and praise of God. Oh, what an extraordinary preparation God thus made for us to extol his dear son even before he was born. And so we pray. O oh, grant, thou Lord of love, that we receive rejoicing the word proclaimed by John, one true repentance voicing, that gladly we may walk upon our Savior's way until we live with him in his eternal day. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.